This time on pedal box, we fit our fuel tank and we're finishing up the radiator install, plumbing in some of the coolant lines. What we have in front of us here is our brand new fuel cell. It's an eBay special we've had our eye on for quite a long time, bit of a bargain, nice little eight gallon fuel cell. So this is the same piece that we dimensioned all of our footwell to when we were building our pedal box enclosure and everything. And there is a small problem. Unfortunately, the dimensions that we got off of the eBay listing are for the tank alone. We thought they included the feet. So we dimensioned it assuming that the feet would fit in the space, but actually the feet are bigger, thus the issue. So the new plan, is we're not going to lower it all the way to the floor. We're going to keep it about 50 mil raised up and rest the front left corner on the lower trailing arm mount. And this is going to give us about 50 mil of clearance underneath, which is quite neat. It lines up fairly well with the top of the chassis. And as a bonus, it gives us room to run our coolant lines underneath. Now the brackets themselves are just cut out of some 60 by 30 mil box. We're just going to notch at the bottom so it fits over the front and rear cross members. One where the feet are and one between our rear suspension mounts. Now we've got all of these cut out, we can start getting onto mounting and locating the tank. However, the first one that we want to mount and locate is around the rear of our suspension. So we need to disassemble that so we can get in to mount the stud on the top of the existing mount. So with the stud welded in place, we can drop the tank in and locate where our mounts are approximately going to sit. We can only do two of them, but we can mark the holes and drill them out. Now we've got that in place, we can fit the studs to them. With all those welded in place, we can bolt these back onto the bottom of the tank and put the whole assembly back in and get three of our mounts welded in. And just like that, several hours have passed, the sun's going away and the fuel tank is fitted. We might have gotten a little bit distracted with sanding and repriming some other bits of the car and the front suspension rebuild was just as much of a pain in the backside as it always has been. The fuel tank's in, uh, all of our brackets are made up, everything's bolted down good. This is actually in for real, he says, it's not actually bolted down tight so it does rattle a bit but we're all good. Um, so now we're going to move on to sorting out the cooling lines that are going to run straight underneath it and out the front to our radiator. Now, it's been about six weeks since we put this tank in now and the weather's changed, hence the hats and the jumpers, but we finally got the next part of this build and that is the coolant pipes to go from the engine to the radiator at the front. Now these are a set of MGF stainless steel pipes that come out from the middle and do exactly the same job in that car. Now these arrived a little while ago, but we've been waiting on a good idea to try and fit them around the bottom of this tank because whilst they look nice and flat, they actually kick up at this end and they hit the bottom of the tank, which would have mean either raising the tank up or doing something else here. And as we'd already finished this, neither of us wanted to do that. So in order to fix this, we heated up these bends and we started bending these back down using a big length of scaffold pole so that we could get them a little bit more level. Now they're not perfectly level, but frankly that doesn't matter in this case. All they need to do is dip underneath this tank enough that they miss the sump that it feeds out of. And happily, they do. So the plan now is to fit these between the seats, underneath the tank, 
as you can see, it misses the sump just enough that we can get our silicon hose on. And then we'll fit the other hoses from the engine onto this end, and we'll build a very small tunnel through the center. It's not going to be as big as the one we had before, but it doesn't need to be, because really, it needs to carry some wires, these two pipes, possibly a heater matrix set of pipes, and the gear shift linkages. Securing our coolant lines to the car is a fairly simple job compared to a lot of what else we've done. We're going to lop off these little single tabs because we don't really have anywhere that we can attach those too easily. And we're going to use these big full width tabs. There's one here at the back and there's also one off at the front that you can't see to actually bolt down onto the floor. So we're going to bolt those through onto a little piece of box. We're just going to weld this in on the back of the chassis there and bolt down straight into this through a hole we're going to pop in it. But before we actually weld these in for real, we're going to put the seats back in so that we know how much room we've got for our tunnel because we need to fit this and all of the brackets and our shift linkages and maybe the heater lines that Adrian mentioned earlier and then the actual walls of the tunnel itself in between our seats. So we're going to pop those in and see how it all fits up. And this is why we test fit. Now that we've put the seats in place and cut the tabs off the side, we can see that actually if we'd left the pipes on the left hand edge there, we would have been really, really close to our seats. We couldn't actually have fit the tunnel uh, sidewall in that gap. So we've realigned the pipes, we're going to run them directly down the center line of the car and what we're thinking is our heater lines are going to be a bit smaller so we can probably sit those down the left and right hand side and our shift cables because they tend to come as a bundle will run straight over the middle. Moving up to the front here you can see one of the reasons we chose these MGTF coolant lines. This kink to the left up at the front is great for us because even though we're running down the center line of the car we still get to dodge our upright without having to put a full bend in the pipe ourselves and now that we've taken out the upward bend in it we just tweaked it down a little it also clears our fuel tank and the sump underneath it so happy days all we need to do now is cut this crossbar down to size and we'll weld it in in between these two diagonal braces and then we'll have our front mount to hold this in place so you've got a rear bracket in place now so we can bolt the back end of the coolant pipes in place and that will locate the front end so we just drop the bolt through thread that in and now we can measure up where the front cross member goes So we've cut our cross member to size, we're now just going to bolt it onto the coolant lines. And now we straighten this up and weld it wherever it fits. Now the driver's side of the car isn't quite as easy as the passenger side. We're going to start with the same 15 degree bend and 200mm piece of hard line to bring us to underneath the rack. That way we can mount it securely, same as the other side. Then we go on to a 90 degree bend to bring us towards this side of the car, a 200mm piece of pipe there, and then an adapter from 32 to 38mm. Now we've gone up to 38 purely because of the availability of this part, which was only available in 38mm diameter. Now this is a 135 degree bend that's going to take us around the pillar at this corner of the car. We have to come around the outside, so this runs around here, and then this 90 degree bend is going to get shortened down a lot, as is this piece, so that it can get onto the outlet at the bottom corner of the radiator that sits right next to the pillar about here. At least that was the plan. However, theory and practice, especially on this build, are two very different things. Quite often we've spent a lot of time planning something and then when it, we've had all the parts in front of us, we've done it slightly differently. This is no exception. Here we've put a cross pipe directly from here to underneath the rack onto the hard lines. Now we've changed that so that we're not using this 135 degree bend because the radius isn't quite as tight as I would have liked and it was actually getting in the way of the suspension and it could have caused us a problem down the line. Not ideal. But this also simplifies our life way, way down the line when we come to build our inner arches around here, because it means we're not having to work around the pipes on each side. Everything on this side just moves into the center of the chassis and nothing really changes. On this side, we need to substitute in a couple of pieces, but we've got a 38 to 38 mil 90 degree bend we can replace for this reducer, and we've got a 38 mil pipe that we can put through the center. All in all, it actually makes our lives a lot simpler, and I'm in favor of it. And last up, just to hold everything in place and stop it all wobbling around under the car and maybe working itself loose, we've got some P-clips that we're going to pop around our coolant lines on the front here and bolt them in place on some little brackets that we've made up that we're going to weld onto the body. So this one's going a bit further back and that's going to have two P-clips on top of it holding the coolant lines like that. And we've got a third one that we're putting on the front here on one of our uprights.
all in all, pretty successful few days here. We've been working around the fuel tank for quite a long time now, so finally having it in means we can start reasoning about where we put our battery, fuel pump, filter, loads and loads of other bits and pieces like that, which is great. Yeah, we can get a lot more stuff done. And now we've got the coolant lines in, we're one step closer to getting the engine running, which will be a massive milestone. Don't forget to have a look at pedalbox.show if you'd like to buy one of our t-shirts, hats, caps, ready for the summer. And check out the Patreon if you'd like to support us. If you haven't already, please remember to like the videos and subscribe to the channel. I know you're probably tired of hearing it from every channel, but everyone says it because it's totally true. We'll catch you next time.